I hate Lords of Chaos. Oh, that movie pisses me off so goddamn much. Ugh. Everybody needs to hear my opinion about it. God damn it. Why aren't enough people listening to my opinion about Lords of Chaos? I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Just kidding, I don't really give a shit about that movie. Uh, hey guys. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody's self-aggrandizing their opinions about a goddamn movie that doesn't mean shit to us metalheads. Anyways, um, remember a couple of videos ago when I got a bunch of records in vinyl? Um, this is going to be everything that I've gotten in on CD, one LP, since then. Uh, a lot of stuff I haven't really dug into all the way yet, so uh, not going to be expansive reviews of much of anything, but you know, a good old collection update, just like you know me and love me for. Um, while I flap my gums, how about we enjoy some Cult of Death, huh? Those who know, they know Cult of Death is cream of the cream. Slit Throats and Ritual Nights is the album. Raw, grim, underground, black metal from Atlanta, I believe. All this stuff is killer, but their final full length is awesome. So, got a stack of shit from various sources. Here we go! So yesterday, I got in the final release from... Fallen Empire. This, if I'm not mistaken, I may have bought um, the Maricognitum LP. That might have been the first Fallen Empire release. But this is the only other Fallen Empire release I've ever bought. And actually the first Death Fortress uh, album that I've bought. I really did like Death Fortress's last album. But I felt like I'm going to wait one more record and see what they do. Because I know that it's gonna, they're like incrementally inching up toward a great record and this is fucking it I expected them to do an album that it was this ferocious and awesome but I wasn't expecting it to be so fucking grim and just more black metal and I kind of wanted them to be more of a black metal band based on the previous two that I'd heard from them um, but I didn't expect them to um, so it was unexpectedly great and also expectedly great. I really fucking dig this record. Um, it's pummeling, ferocious, and grim, and fucking cold. It's just got so many things that I love about a really, really good black metal record. Package-wise, there's really nothing to write home about black vinyl. Um, but pick this up, man. It's so far early in the year I'm still chiseling ice off of my driveway uh, but it's my album of the year so far uh, may wind up being my album of the year depending on whatever but so that's the LP we got some CDs in um, one of my favorite subscribers Dave who I've been talking with here and there you know what I just realized I forgot a couple of releases that he sent me anyways he sent me a VCLT um, package a couple of maybe two weeks ago now or so um, and it was fucking awesome he he picked these things out not knowing if I already had them or not not knowing if I would like them yada 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 um, but this was a really great couple of grabs that he got me I'll be right back So Dave um, wrote me on Discogs a couple of months ago and wound up um, sending me that Funeral LP, as if you remember from that video, um, and that was fucking awesome. And I never expected him to send me uh, a couple other goodies, but uh, here we are. He sent me the new one from Drowning the Light. This cover art is fantastic. Uh, the new one is called Curse Below the Waves, um, Dark Adversary. Put this one out. Um, I haven't had a chance to give it a spin yet, but it is in the CD wallet, so I'm going to be listening to that 
as I've said quite a bit, I'm not the biggest Drowning Delight fan, but their last proper full length, they have a million fucking releases, so that's a, one reason I'm not a huge fan of theirs, but they had a full length, 2015 or so, had the big scary sea creature on it or whatever. That was pretty good. Uh, and that album, honestly, was kind of like the only reason I was like, I don't know what I think about this band, but this should be pretty good. Um, Dave also sent me, out of the kindness of his warm heart, Evoken's new one, Hypno, Hypnagogia. Yeah. Uh, man, this is fucking good. It's exactly what you would want out of an amazing Evoken release. One of my favorites of last year. I listened to it digitally a couple times uh, and had planned on picking up a copy. Nothing really to look at, but man, what a beautiful, sorrowful, mournful, just so vast. Evoken has the knack of just making music that is just larger than life, huger than an album should seem. It's just so infinite and heavy. Cult of Drat, Cult of Death brings the riffs. Dave also sent me uh, this full link from Druid Lord. This is Grotesque Offerings. Um, and I had mentioned Druid Lord a couple of months ago, maybe when I was uh, talking about Equinox, which is a band I freaked out about last summer. And uh, one of the guys from Equinox is now in Druid Lord. So. I figured it was gonna be pretty good. Hell's Headbangers put this out last, or 17, 2017. Um, it sounds quite a bit like Asphyx, so if you're at all a fan of Asphyx and you're kind of on the fence about Druid Lord, you're uh, gonna wanna pick this up. Really heavy, uh, mid pace to slow death metal from Florida. Um, there's some, they do it, a couple of times they do some long drawn out kind of doomy parts that I really liked and I found myself wishing that there was maybe a little bit more of that kind of variety to lend some levity to the more heavy death metal kind of stuff so maybe if there's a follow up album to that it might be even better than Grotesque Offerings but it's a pretty solid uh, kickoff I believe that's their debut Dave also sent me, this is probably so far my highlight of the pile uh, the new one from Ultra Tomb, Necro Vortex. I had been seeing a lot of guys talk about this, um, but has anyone talked about how this is basically like a tribute to the album cover of In the Nightside Eclipse? I don't know. Check it out digitally and think, see what you think, but I don't know. I totally see In the Nightside Eclipse on this cover, but it doesn't sound anything like that. It's just, you know, sheer coincidence. Um, another one of those, you know, super hyped death metal albums that wins, deserves the hype, it's fucking awesome. I had pretty much been planning on getting it on CD, so Dave sent me the cassette. Now I'm like even more convinced that I need to buy the CD. Um, it's fucking great, it reminds me a lot of Left Hand Path from Entombed. I don't know if that comparison has been made, um, but it's really got a lot of that fucking steamroller kind of pummeling metal to it with some kind of crusty hardcore sort of tinge to it. Oh, next Dave sent me, um, this is Sapaudia. I don't know the first thing about this band. Um, he said it was uh, kind of a depressive suicidal black metal kind of thing, um, which I do like on occasion. Um, Dread Records put this out. Um, a couple of years ago yet. This isn't brand brand new or anything, but I gave this a real quick cursory listen and realized I wanted something a lot more upbeat and uh, pummeling, and then I put in the Ultra Tune, and um, that was the end of that. So I'm gonna go back to Sapaudia and we'll see what we think about it. Um, in the last video, I talked a lot about Thy Worshipper, but I didn't talk about this one um, because I hadn't listened to it yet, and I have since listened to it and it fucking blew me away enough that I want to revisit it for a second and urge you to check this out. So what I didn't know about this one is that it actually was released originally on cassette back in 1996. Um, and this was a Polish band who moved to Ireland 
and I think that was when they, they really changed their style and released those other two that I talked about in my last video. <coughs> this one, um, Popio, Popio, <coughs> um, is a full length, and it's fucking so good. It's total 90s black metal. Um, reminded me instantly of Jimmy Borger's Stormblast. Um, it just reminds me of so much of that kind of cacophonous kind of era black metal from the late 90s. Check this out if that sounds interesting. It's super, super interesting. Um, the packaging on this is super minimal, so I don't know how much to look at, but it is a killer release. It was just, not only did it start off amazing, but it just continuously had these interludes and stuff that just kept me fucking waiting to find out what they were going to do next. Riff after riff, it just, it delivers all the way. Now, I should have checked to make absolute sure, but I don't think I talked about this in my last collection update. If I'm wrong, I'm talking about it twice because it deserves to be talked about twice. This is Eternal Darkness um, and Necro Harmonic. Roy does these great discography compilations of old death metal bands that he was a fan of or was in contact with. Every step of the way when death metal was a burgeoning genre uh, in the United States, Roy was there. Uh, and he was in contact with bands from Europe. Uh, so I think that's probably how this came about. But this band really never got their due back in the day. So this is really kind of the biggest, I guess, hurrah that you're going to get out of them. But it's a collection of all their demos, as you would expect. Um, rehearsals, seven inches, the whole nine yards. It's all here. Um, I think this was co-released with Morbid Wraith Productions. And I actually kind of had a hard time finding this um, for sale. Um, I don't remember the name of the disco that I actually found this in, but I was finding it on Discogs going for like $50 and yada yada yada, and I was pissed because I gave it a listen and really liked it and immediately decided that I wanted it. And what do you know, nobody had it for an affordable price. Lo and behold, I used the ever helpful metal detector and I scared up a copy of this in some distro that I had never heard of um, come to think of it I almost want to say it might be this morbid wrath morbid wrath records either way I will try and leave a link down below for you to check it out um, it's super good it's so I guess this band was like some members lived in Finland some lived in Sweden on the board like on the border um, and so they're kind of Swedish and Finnish um, and that you know the style really says that also um, but uh, what was I gonna say about this band uh, I I don't know I'm drawing a blank but we got a lot more to get through here um, also picked up eh, I I hate this artwork but this album is awesome uh, horrified with the Garden of Earthly Delights um, late one night in bed as I do the last thing I do usually is I look up I just start going on a hunt in on disc dogs God, I, this, this artwork sucks so this is a reissue of a rare death metal album from 93 if I'm not mistaken this is some Greek black metal death metal um, usually not really my wheelhouse but in 2005 this was reissued by Black Lotus Records um, I guess the the rabbit hole that started me on finding out about this album was I was like Necromantia. I don't have any Necromantia. I'm kind of willing to give them a listen. I can find something um, affordable. So I thought I would start with the beginning. I looked up uh, the record label that released the early Necromantia releases. Got sidetracked. Some of the releases that that label had done were horrified. Um, so anyways, this is early Greek death metal along with those Barathrin, Rotting Christ, Necromantia, uh, alongside those country mates. Um, wound up sounding a lot like um, Obsequii to me, to these ears. I can hear that sort of, when you have these like two different melodic guitar lines going, some bands they just they harmonize them so well, and the, the, the guitars sound so married uh, rhythmically. But in this band, and also in Upsequiae, 
I feel like there's these two different guitars going on at the same time that like rarely converge. And it, it sometimes at first it kind of doesn't make sense. But once you kind of expand your mind long enough to understand how to listen to it, it's a fascinating way to, like, to hear a song written, especially a, a, in this style. So, that's really good stuff. Um, yeah. Um, also, a buddy of mine locally hooked me up with some Metal CD. Arcturus. Arcturian. Um, yeah. Some people have said this is their greatest album. This is their favorite Arcturus album. And I was just like, okay, I need to pay attention to it, apparently. Sideshow Symphonies, uh, I couldn't get into it, man. I I just couldn't do it. Um, so yeah, this, this album, I think, kind of takes off where maybe La Masquerade, maybe I don't know, it really sounds like some of the best era from all those three albums, but Sideshow Symphonies, that kind of stuff just kind of bugs me. Um, Arcturus, post, you know, post La Masquerade, really post Aspera for me, is kind of a love-hate relationship. I absolutely can't stand listening to Hellhammer play drums, but he kind of tones it down for these guys. Um, Spared writes some amazing symphonic music, um, it's interestingly experimental, but, you know, it's just kind of bittersweet for me, but had to get the new Arcturus. Also picked up the new one from Monstrosity, Passage of Existence, Digipack version, came out on Metal Blade. Listened to it once, and it fucking rules. Uh, yeah, great stuff. Next we've got one I've been meaning to pick up. <clears throat> Heard a lot of hype about last year. This is Wayfarer with the World's Blood. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, don't really know. It's kind of Cascadian, I guess, from what I understand. The profound Lore put this out, and it was on top of a shitload of uh, Year End lists last year, so decided I had to check it out. And lastly, um, I believe this is the going to be the final pile from uh, my buddy Kevin. So I decided to kind of go deep on it and get a real huge stack of shit, um, clean them out from what I could from what I could see, anyways. So I got a couple of things that I didn't really know what they were. Just thought, why not? I got this sorcery double disc compilation of, of their demos, and I didn't even really look into it. I figured it would have blood chilling tales on it. That was really kind of the reason I I bought this. Um, it does not have blood chilling tales on it. It's an album that's kind of a classic death metal must-have, but I never really got around to getting it. Um, spun this for a couple of minutes, and eh, it just kind of sounds like some old 80s death metal kind of stuff. Not all that great, but maybe the mood will strike me. Um, also picked up the latest two, if I'm not mistaken, from Gehenna. Norway's Gehenna. Um, always was a fan of that band. Um, I always kind of heard these albums were kind of like, eh. Um, Frost from Satyricon plays on, I think, this one, WW. Um, and I'm always entertained by Frost drumming, so I decided to pick up that one. And uh, yeah, I haven't really listened to them much yet. I maybe, maybe spun them back when they came out or so, once or twice, and I was like, yeah, they're okay. Um, <coughs> next, picked up uh, Astarte, Doomed Dark Years. I've been hearing a lot about this band for years and years and years, and I never got around to listening to them or picking up any of their stuff. So, this was a well-reviewed album. Decided to get a copy of that, and uh, haven't played it yet. Also picked up uh, fucking Cult of Death, Swordmaster, with what is it? Postmortem Tales. So, when Swordmaster released Wrath of Time, that was one of my first fucking obsessions in black metal that fucking EP is so good sounds Swedish sounds dark and vampiric kind of thrashy but they took a fucking 180 turn from there and I hated it I hated them for it and I always was just like fuck Swordmaster other than Wraths of Time but I decided to pick this up and maybe give them a second chance it's cheesy thrash but you know maybe I'll like it this time around 
I always thought this kind of shit, this happened back in like 98 or so where everybody was flipping you off and Nippelheim and shit like that. I always thought that was so fucking cheesy. Also picked up um, this reissue of Size, Scorn, Defeat. I actually had an original copy of this album that I found in a used bin back in 98, 99 or so. Um, I wound up selling it on eBay because I needed some money. This artwork is so goddamn awful. What was wrong with the original? I don't know. Hammerheart put this out. This is a double disc version. Oh, the writing on this is impossible. There's demo versions of these songs and some covers on here. Probably just a bunch of Venom covers as far as I know, but I always needed to pick up another copy of uh, Scorn Defeat. Also decided to take the plunge and get into Running Wild. This is a band that they have an immense discography. I never knew where to, I never knew where to start with them, so I just kind of was like, eh, I don't need to bother with these guys. Pirate metal, yeah, whatever. Um, but I put in both of these albums yesterday, Black Hand In, as well as Death or Glory. I think most people, other than their debut, consider this maybe their best work and uh yeah, these are really fucking good. I didn't realize, I guess, it's been probably 10 years since I listened to Running Wild at all, but I didn't realize really how fucking power metal they really were. They were really pioneers of uh, going out of the 80s from traditional speed metal, heavy metal, and thrash, and being a fucking, pretty much a power metal band, as far as I can tell. Next, we've got Tyrant with Too Late to Pray, Tyrant. Uh, this was well reviewed, so I just decided to pick it up for a couple of bucks. And let's do it yesterday. It's a little more cheesy than I think I can usually stomach. Um, so, I don't know. I, that may not hang around in the collection long, but. Also decided to pick up Sardonic Wrath by Dark Throne. Yeah, uh, for the longest time, the late era Dark Throne, I was just like, fuck it, don't need to hear it, whatever. Um, but I've been going back and kind of picking up some of those. Uh, albums that I missed out on, like Hate Them. Um, I still need to get uh, Ravishing Grimness, um, Sardonic Wrath. Wait, this is Sardonic Wrath. What's the other one? <laughs> the, uh, the one with the guy hanging on it. Whatever. Um, and then I think I'm probably good. The FOAD, the Circle of the Wagons. Um, there might be another one that's kind of punky and crusty. Uh, I'm not really into it. But lastly, I uh, so I've had Dance of December Souls in my collection for many, many, many years. Um, but I lost the disc. <laughs> this has been a kind of a, a a thing lately where I'm losing my fucking CDs because I have them all over the house. So I'm trying to keep my collection alphabetized and organized and put away. Anyways, you ever do that thing where you have one disc and you put the disc in another jewel case and then you put it away and then it's fucking gone forever. Uh, maybe you don't have quite the collection that I do, but my copy of Dance of December Souls could be in some other CD in there somewhere. In fact, it's the no fashion version of it, so it's kind of a rarity. So um, I've tried to find it. I swear to God, I've looked fucking all over for it. So I just decided to finally, you know what? This thing was like six or eight bucks on Discogs. Decided to get it. Been really wanting to listen to it. And it also has some bonus tracks on there, but man, it had probably been a good 10 years since I listened to Dance of December Souls. It is a fucking masterpiece, man. It is just, there is no equal to this album. It's, first of all, I love it because it's like one of the best uses of Unisound Studios and Dan Suano's brilliant production of a Swedish metal record. It is, ah, oh, it sounds so impeccably perfect. Um, but also, it is just an emotionally draining, doomy, atmospheric, kind of vampiric black metal record. Got some gunk on it or something. Um, but man, it is a fucking amazing record. Ah. Um, I, next, I do have uh, Brave Murder Day. I'm going to give that a listen and kind of see what I think. Um, it's been probably another 10 years since I listened to Brave Murder Day also. But man, this just... It was like listening to this for the first time all over again. It was such an incredible fucking record. If you haven't visited Dance of December Souls lately, I highly recommend it. 
So I guess that's gonna do it until next time. We'll figure out what we're gonna do for another video. Um, maybe first episode of my new series. Stay tuned and hang in there. We'll see you next time.